So you'd like to start van life but don't know where to start. Today I'm going to give you six steps to make sure that you're on the road by next week. Let's get started. Tip number one is use what you have. You do not need a sprinter. When I first started considering even the idea of van life, I felt like I needed a sprinter van to be able to do the real van life. It's just not the case. I actually already had a van and it's still the van that I have currently. His name's Murray and I felt like he was not adequate enough for me to even commit to doing a little bit of short term van life. Like I really wish that I hadn't felt so influenced by that because I think it really pushed back the time period of me prepping for my van life. If I had known that Actually, there's a bajillion different ways of doing it. You sometimes don't even need a van to do van life. Then I feel like I would have been more comfortable in my decision. But because there's such a giant financial step into purchasing something like a Sprinter in comparison to just getting something off of Craigslist or wherever you purchase your cheap unmarked vehicles from. So now that we've obviously broken down the fact that we do not need some fancy van to do van life, the next thing is to simplify your build. Now this is even coming from a designer. I do personally believe that it's function over beauty every single time. And especially if we're wanting to get on the road by next week, sometimes beauty has to be removed to make sure something's functional. To make sure that you really enjoy van life and know if there's any additional things that you need to be adding in at a later date, you need just the bare basic minimums. So for me, that looked like having a battery, which was about this big, that would charge most of my devices. It was an esky that I would fill with ice and then a portable little bupane sort of gas cook top that you'd get from Bunnings. And those were the three key things that I really needed for me to have some food and also the bare basics for me in my van life. Obviously you need your bed as well. For myself you're more than welcome to have a look at my van tour but I just raised my bed and everything went underneath and it was just as simple as that. Of course you could go ahead and build things in but doing a no build especially in the very beginning just to ensure that you do enjoy it and you're not putting all this money in for the sake of just trying it. You do not need to have freestanding shower or a toilet or a Murphy bed or anything crazy like that. We just want to have the bare basic simplicities that we need for life. Just think about what you need for a camping trip. Honestly, majority of the things that you need for camping is the exact same thing you need for van life. And I think camping really allows you to narrow down on the bare necessities rather than trying to look at it as like a small apartment or condo or something like that. Cause then you start putting in things that you don't necessarily need. So much like camping, we are not going for an entire year. Our first goal is just to go for a weekend. And I know that you know you wanna go all in, but if you go for just the weekend, that'll usually give you a pretty good indication as so whether or not there's certain things you need and whether or not you've got things that you probably don't actually need in your van already. All I want you to do is go for maybe an hour or two away, go to a campsite where there are going to be other campers there and just test it out because the other thing as well that I don't think many people talk about is that when you're doing van life, it's a bit confronting knowing that you're sleeping in just a metal tin and that's all that separates you from the outside world especially when I was doing solo traveling, I needed to be able to start getting comfortable with the idea of, okay, I am safe in my van, I'm totally okay, but it was something I had to kind of work through. So having just a small weekend away, making sure that you can actually cope with that is a big thing that you need to be able to do. And this next tip definitely goes alongside that. It is definitely going to be the weirdest tip that I'm going to be giving you here, but I want you to eat alone in a car park. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but what I want you to do, I want you to make some two minute noodles at home, drive down to your local supermarket, stand outside and eat your two minute noodles by yourself. Do not be watching your YouTube or your TikTok or anything like that. I want you to just sit in the uncomfortable feeling that people are going to be watching you. They're going to be looking at you like you're a weirdo. There's a very, very specific reason as to why I want you to do this. So when you're doing van life, obviously things aren't always going to go to plan. Sometimes you may not go all the way to the destination you're hoping to get to. So you might need to camp in a really weird area and of course everyone needs to eat. So you might need to cook in a car park or something like that. I cannot tell you how uncomfortable I felt for ages just making myself some food, even without like the bupane cooktop or anything like that. Just by standing outside and eating, people kind of look at you funny and fair enough, obviously. It's like, why are you eating here? Go home. You've got to get used to this uncomfortable nature of, okay, well, 
you know, someone's going to be watching me potentially because they're curious. And that's totally okay for them to be curious, but you're just going to become very self-aware. So just try it once, get used to the feeling. I know it's going to be shit. I kind of wish that I had prepared myself for that because I kind of had to figure that one out on the road and I felt so uncomfortable and I really didn't even like cooking on the road as well because I just felt like everyone was looking at me like a weirdo and I couldn't really do much about it because I needed to eat. Step number five is go to the mechanic. I know it sounds very obvious, but you need to know what's wrong with your vehicle and to keep an eye on certain things and obviously get things fixed up before you leave because the worst thing possible is you start traveling and then your van breaks down on you and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere with no self-service and you're like, great, this is how I die. And it's just an extremely stressful situation. So we want to try and minimize the possibility of that. And even just knowing the quirks of your vehicle. So like if they say, oh yeah, your van makes a weird noise, but we can't figure out where it's from. It seems fine. So you should be okay. At least when you're hearing it, you're like, okay, in theory, should be all right. Not something to worry about. Mechanic said it was all good. I've certainly learned my lesson with that one. Um, I took mine to the mechanics and everything like that. And even with me going to the mechanics, mine still decided to die on me. And there will be a video coming out shortly about everything that's happened most recently with my van. It does seem like it's finally working again, which is very exciting, but it took a month. And that's another thing that you need to keep in mind. If your van does break it down, you need to have a backup plan because there's a very low chance that the mechanic's going to be like, yeah, 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 you can keep sleeping in your van while I fix it. You need to have either some backup money for a hotel or travel to places where you may have friends. So worst case scenario, you could go ahead and couch surf for a couple of days because there's nothing worse than having your van break down and then being stranded and thinking, oh gosh, what am I going to do with myself now? And as someone that has had a van that's been very broken down for the last month, it's certainly uncomfortable. And thankfully I'm in my own home state and I'm at my own home now. So, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it could have been a lot worse. So keep that in mind. This final tip, I know you're gonna hate because I'm sure everyone says it, but just start. I know it sounds really, really simple, but you need to just test it out, test the waters, go on your little weekend away first, make sure you enjoy it. See if there's anything else that you really need in your van before you just commit. Because sometimes when the dream is so big and just looks so scary, we sometimes procrastinate and just put it off for a while. And then we're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll go by the end of the month. Oh, I'll go by mid-June. Sometimes when you're trying to aim for perfection, you just continuously find things that you need to perfect. And particularly with van life, like it is always a constant work in progress. Like even the most beautiful looking vans will have its own quirks and, you know, the people might need to fix it to a certain level and degree. The thing is, is that van life is not about the van. It's about what the van can give you, which is the lifestyle. And if you want to be out on the road and, you know, seeing all these beautiful things, you're not going to be thinking about the van that you're sleeping in at night. You're going to be thinking about the fact that you're traveling to all these amazing places, seeing all these amazing things and experiencing all these amazing people and places. That's my last little tidbit for you. But now you are most certainly ready to get onto the road. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on our next adventure.